Actually, we've got two questions. So right. we do need one each. Mm. And, and, and I'll be so succinct. Go on, be very succinct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when Andy left office, the NHS was in historically the best state it has ever been. Six years later, it is facing ruin. And it seems to me that the Tory policy for the health of the poor is to narrow the interval between the grave, the cradle and the grave. That's what we're planning to do, to make people... And I just, it's all an issue of how much power that one can really assert. Because there are things you want to change. You want to increase the budget, and you want to increase, you want to change the way the budget has, is, is spent, and in particular you want to throw away completely the spectre of Andrew Lancey's Health and Social Care Act, the levelling out to the external market, and even also, I hope, to get rid of the internal market. So it's a question, I guess, of which of you three people really can inspire us with the certainty you'll be able to exert that kind of power. Because I have to say, what I've heard has been inspiring, but it's the delivery and the power. Okay, uh, Ivan, be inspired. I think it is the, it's the right question. I think that um, I think that we have got you've got to have a candidate who believes the existing deal is flawed, but the devolution as a matter of principle, making decisions nearest to local communities, is the right thing to do. And, and the fragmentation of the NHS argument is this: there must always be national minimum standards wherever the NHS is. It always must be funded by a general taxation, irrespective of your means. And just very specifically, how are you going to change the legislative framework and the fiscal constraints with which you're currently working? That's really my question. Right. Well, well first of all, I've, I've explained how I would fight for a different deal in terms of a billion pounds, not 450 a million pounds, for transformation. I've explained how I would immediately from day one uh, say to the Tories, I am not prepared to collude with marketisation and privatisation. I am elected by the people of Greater Manchester to be a Labour mayor. Uh, I would do an immediate piece of work on the elimination of the internal market and how that could be done without massive uh, reorganisation because what people are very scared of is yet more uh, top down or even localised uh, reorganisation. But I would do an immediate assessment of what would it take to eliminate the internal market. And then I would make an argument, as long as we can demonstrate we can do that without that massive organisation uh, upheaval. In addition to that, I've said to you that my very clear focus, and everybody who worked in health and social care um, and had responsibilities would know, would be the reduction of health inequality. That would be my top line that would drive absolutely every other policy in the context of health, social care and the full range of services, housing, transport and all the rest of it. Okay. And the final point I would make to end is this, and I've said this throughout my presentation, if you have politicians who have the greatest rhetoric, the greatest strategies, the greatest documents, the greatest diagrams about how everybody sits around the right tables, but that leader is not focused on delivery and implementation every day, you, by the way, not micromanaging delivery and implementation, but judging success by, is things, are things getting better for the patient, the person and the frontline staff person, because the other thing that I would do differently is this. I would seek to co-develop change with frontline people who work in the health and social care system, rather than piling a load of change on them constantly and not recognising they are often the best innovators. They're the people who often know how you can make the most difference. And, and, the, and the, the classic example of how delivery and implementation would be different is this. If the mayor says, Mental health will be on my desk every morning. Mental health will be on. That changes the game. How many times have we been going on about Cinderella, Cinderella, Cinderella? And the reason it's Cinderella is when the commissioners are allowed freedom and flexibility, the last thing they choose to spend money on, frankly, is mental health and children's uh, mental health services. So by having that clear vision, clear strategy, health inequality, getting rid of the trickle-down model, by the way, which is the very top line, Okay, but then having a focus which is on delivery and implementation is, is being judged. My success will be judged on delivery and implementation, not fine speeches and press releases. I think that that would make transformation difference. Very final point: you have to be able to recognise that health and social care has not been devolved to the mayor. How many people have been honest about this? Health and social care has been devolved to each of the ten districts. That is the day devolution deal. So it's not just the power you have, it's not just the levers you have, it's the capacity you have to work with each of those districts to have some common strategic agreed 
decision making across Greater Manchester, some uniformity. Uh, but also, how can you get them to sign up to the fact that early years needs to be the top priority for everybody? That mental health no longer should be the Cinderella. So you have to be able to do that uh, as well. Uh, and that's where I think the ability to work with the leaders and the senior uh, councillors in those areas and the senior health uh, people is going to be incredibly important. Because that is the nature of the deal. The mayor is not sat there running health and social care in Greater Manchester. And to pretend that he or she is is completely dishonest. So it's also your capacity to do all the things that I've said in partnership with those 10 districts. Andy. Well, right, a very good question. And I think it deserves a very, very specific uh, answer. How do you wield that power? And I think it comes from authority, doesn't it? The moral authority behind what you are saying. Because I am very clear here, this government will want this mayor to fail. And they will want to do to the NHS in Greater Manchester what they did to the NHS in Wales and run it down routinely. <coughs> so the challenge is actually a big one, a very big one. The person who comes into this job needs to know, in my view, the NHS inside out, inside out. And needs to be very clear about what they're going to do. So then how do you get that moral authority to start to make the demands that you're asking? It's, in the first instance, it's quite a simple thing. The Greater Manchester NHS needs to outperform England. Doesn't, not by a huge amount, but by enough to show that the different vision, the different values, runs a better NHS. So the year of care system that I've described is all about doing that. It's, it's about taking that pressure off A&E by supporting particularly older people differently in their own homes. Pay for the decent social care. I'm going to be honest on Yes, pay for it. Because it's better to spend money on properly rewarded staff, properly trained staff. A few hundred pounds there is better than thousands of pounds spent in A&E and in hospital beds. So yeah, invest in those staff and in that social care. But by having that model of care, we don't have old people flying around the city in blue light ambulances going in through A&E because there's no support for them in the community. If you build that system, you will be able to, marginally at first, I agree, but you'll be able to run A&E better than the England average. That would be my plan. And from that comes your moral authority to then go to the government and say, what we are doing here is working, but you need to give us more. And you need to then identify the blockages in legislation that are barriers to integration that are preventing that fuller version of integration, which will lock even more benefits and savings. Because that's where I see it. The more you integrate, the more you improve services, the more you save money. That is the way I, I see it. The more you build a team around the person and, and support people, empower people, the more those savings will come. But that is, that's where the authority comes from, isn't it? Because you're running a better health service than they are. And then you can say, how dare you not help us Go even better, because our vision is working. And that's the simple answer to your question. Thank you. Jim. Good morning. I'm Jim Battle. Uh, as you can see, I'm the spokesperson of Tony, which is a great task. I'm actually Tony's Deputy Police and Crime Commissioner. Um, I think one of the, the answers to your question, I think, really, <laughs> is that one thing we've got abundance of in Greater Manchester is big political characters. We're not short of those. We've got them in council, we've got them in our members of parliament, we've got them all over the place. I think what is the key thing for the role of the mayor is to actually harness the different component parts. And if you recall, when we, uh, the devolution deal came through, there was a real strong movement against Osborne about imposing a mayor. The leadership of Greater Manchester in terms of the council didn't want a mayor. And I'm pretty sure if I went round the party members, the party members are going to say the same thing as well. So we were imposed, so the imposition of a mayor is there. But I think the Manchester, Greater Manchester style is actually what Andy was saying, how do you get the best? And I think one of the things I've seen in Greater Manchester, right across, whether it's within our health services or our local government, it, despite what the Tories have been doing, it's a, trying to achieve the best. I think we can achieve better, but the only way we can achieve better is actually by working together, party, leadership, etc. across Greater Manchester. That then creates a movement, because we've seen the devolution in Scotland, 
you know, the, the um, S, S, uh, what's her name, uh, Nicola Sturgeon and her colleagues are now meeting as we speak in, in, in Edinburgh. Devolution is not just a one-off deal, it's a constant fight. Liberation does not, is not given to you, you actually fight your way to achieve that. And I think what we, in order to do that, we have to bring all the component parts to play. And I think what you say is absolutely right. The end game is, is that we're in total control. That's the ambition. That's the direction of travel. But you can't get from where we are now, which is underfunded, ignored, by whether it's been a Labour government or it's been a Tory government, has actually ignored not only Greater Manchester, but the whole of North of England. And we're in danger of that even getting worse as we go. The task is, is to unite the party, to get the right message out, to unite our component parts, and actually build that movement. And I think Tony is a person who can do that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to get my question in now. Oh, that's my last, last question. I thought it was only here for one. Do you think it's right that Wales has more devolution than Manchester? <laughs> Well, they're not comparable, are they? I mean, you know, Wales is a nation. Let's be honest about that. You know, we, we're you talking... mean Manchester isn't? Not yet. <laughs> we can go that way if you want. Um, so they've been at it longer, and uh, but I think the deal that has been done, to be to be fair to, to Jim and everybody, you know, there is substantial change on offer here. There is, but. It's not necessarily going to be the deal is good, it's what you make of it though, isn't it, when it arrives? Because if we don't make a good job of it, they want a Tory mayor here, don't they? Or a UKIP mayor, or an independent mayor. We can't take anything for granted now in the political world.